Welcome back everyone to Aussie Scrapper. I hope you're all well and ready for another full week. So as always, I'm starting off with the photos that I want to scrap. And because I have so many of these photos of the time where my little girl decided to roll in the mud like a little pig, I am going to be doing a double page layout. I did speed this up considerably because I wanted to keep in the whole process of my decision making in how I wanted to get these photos down. I know that some people struggle with double page layouts and I must admit they're not easy but if you play around with your photos, you move them around, you decide which photos you want to use, you do eventually get there and it is worth, worth persevering because I do find that double page layouts do tell a story. I'm going to be using that teal colour cardstock as a match for these photos. Once my photos are nicely matted, I will be using some double sided tape to adhere it to some white cardstock. I am working on both pages simultaneously as I want to make sure that both pages do flow into one another and I more or less have a balance of elements between the two. This double page spread did take me a while and to be honest I'm still not sure how I feel about it. I went through my stash of papers and I found this lovely pink paper with um, some lovely colours in it. it. I liked how it had the sort of greeny, tealy colours that I wanted to use but it also had a very playful nature about it and I also love that it, it's a 2004 five one so it's a little bit old so it's good that it's finally going onto one of my pages so I just cut a strip there as you can see and I'm using some distress oxides in vintage photo to ink all the edges I'm just using my tape runner from spotlight to adhere my strip down there and I will be also adhering it to the other side of the page as I do want the continuity between the two pages then I'm going to get some washi tape out of my stash and I'm just going to apply it to both sides so that they're even on the top and the uh, bottom layer of that pink strip of paper. I'm excited to be finally using some of my washi tape on a layout. The one that I'm using now is a light pink in colour and you can't really see it on the camera but it's got lovely little white polka dots on it. Finally, I get to use these lovely puffy stickers from the Coco Vanilla Love Always collection. I'm just adding some of the lovely little triangles that it's got there, but I land up moving it from that top photo there and I move them down to the bottom photo. I just think they looked better there and that's where they do stay. And I do end up using the grey puffy sticker, that one there that I'm tearing off now, and it just says good times. And she really did have a very good time rolling in the mud. This puffy sticker just says sweet on it with a big S on top. I'm moving along to my title now, and I'm going to be using these Amy Tangerine stickers to spell out the word mud. And for the word bath, I just used some old vinyl stickers that I had in my stash. I'm going to be using this Stampendious Clear Embossing Ink to ink my word bath. And then I will be adding some Chunky Clear Deep Impressions Embossing Enamel to the, to the letters. I will be melting the enamel with my heat gun. And then I'll move along to the next step. I add some more clear embossing ink to the letters and then I sprinkle it with some Stampendious Chunky Gold Embossing Enamel. And I melt this with the heat gun as well. I'm making sure that the enamel is uh, nice and melted and I'm going to be sprinkling this, um, oh I'm not really sure what this is, it looks like sand, it's a very gravelly it's got a very gravelly feel to it to it it's um it's been in my stash for a while and i'm finally using it i have no idea where it came from i'm just melting the enamel once again just to make sure that that sandy coarsey whatever it is that i used really sticks to it and then i go ahead and i do exactly the same procedure all over again to all the letters 
and very soon I will show you what it looks like. I think, yeah. I'm working on the word mud now and I'm doing the same thing, just adding some of the clear embossing ink and sprinkling some of the chunky gold embossing enamel and then I'll be heat setting that with the heat gun. For the word mud, I'm going to be using some of my leftover little bits and pieces of enamels that I've used previously. And I'm just adding it onto the, the letters and then just melting it again into the, the gold enamel. And with my little, it's a kebab stick really, I can then move it around and form little patterns with the as the embossing enamel melts. Now... Those embossing enamels that I have there in that little clear box there, they're just from previous oh, previous projects. And the great thing about the chunky enamels is if it when it melts onto the, the mat, you can actually peel it off and put it away and then reuse it in future projects. And you get different effects and just some really groovy patterns. I'm just trying to see if I can fit my title into this little frame there and once I decide that yes it's going to fit I'm going to move on with the next step of the process and I'm using this thinner bare brown rust effect paste and I'm just going to go over that uh, the word bath just to give it a bit more of a of a dirty look is what I was actually going for a muddy dirty look and I quite like the effect that this had in the end, so I was really happy that I did this extra step. I like my frame, but it's just the wrong colour. So it's back to using the vintage photo distress oxide just to go all around the frame. And I give it a few coats of this till I'm actually happy with the, the depth of colour. I will also be adding some green highlights to this frame just by using the distress oxides in peeled paint. I also add some few highlights of worn lipstick to the frame as well. I will also be sprinkling that with some water as I do want to get some of that oxide effect to come through and then I give it another layer of the vintage photo distress oxide. I then went over it again with the peeled paint and the worn lipstick just as before. So all I'm doing now is just using some of the vintage photo to ink the inside edges of the frame. This stamp is from Eclectic Images and it's called Clout. But I'm actually going to use it as mud because I bought it specifically for these photos. Because when I saw it I went, oh my god, mud splatters. And I didn't even see that it said clouds. To me it was mud splatters and that's what I'm using it for, mud splatters. So I'm just using some uh, Ranger ink. This is permanent ink in the colours sepia and coffee because I want to get like a two-tone effect because, you know, mud can be light in colours and darker in other areas. So that's all I'm going through here and I just mix it up. And um, because I'm using my Misty Positioning tool, it's just great to go over it and over it till I'm happy with it. And I'm just moving it around so I'm getting different effects on my paper. And this is going to be the background of my frame. I'm now just going to be inking the cardstock with some antique linen as it was just too white and stark, the original cardstock. So this just blends it in more into the rest of the layout. And of course, nothing is complete for me till I ink my edges. So I'm just using the archival ink in coffee to go around all the edges. This is where I left the layout for a couple of days because I just was not feeling the love. And then a couple of days later I thought, you know what, it's the white background that's really throwing me. It was just very cold. So I'm just going in with some antique linen and this sort of warmed up the whole feel of the layout and I was a lot happier with it. I felt that it needed a border of some kind so I'm just using my mud stamp to go around the edges and I just changed the positioning of the of the stamp just to give different effects and different patterns of mud around the pages. I thought the layout needed a little bit of bling so I'm just going around the word bath with the bow bunny glitter paste and I also used the same paste along the frame just to tie it all in a little bit more. I'm not sure why I did the next step but 
I did. I just found a stencil in my stash. It's got some lovely twirls and swirls and I'm just using my Distress Oxide in the colour Warm Lipstick. I spent way too long on this layout. My next step is I get another stencil that says Free Spirit on it and I just use some modelling paste to go over it and it just gives it a hint of a word there in that empty dead space. And that's page one. That puffy sticker all just says love on it. I'm going to be doing some more stamping and I found this lovely butterfly stamp and it's um, just going to use my misty tool to stamp it a few times and then I'm going to use some colour blast shimmer cubes in a few different colours which I'm sorry I didn't take down their colours uh, so I can't really tell you which ones I used but I just colour in the butterfly using these lovely lovely shimmer pots and all you do to activate them is you add some water in the interest of keeping this video as short as possible, I'm not going to show you the whole process of colouring in the butterfly, as colouring in is not really one of my strong points. I do enjoy it, but it's not something I'm very good at. I will be fussy cutting my butterfly out, and I found in my stash this journal card that says date up the top there, and I didn't like it that it was so white, so I'm just using the antique linen to Turn it all down and make it blend more into the rest of my layout. As I did with the frame, I will also be adding some of the worn lipstick to the tag. This tag was a very, very thin paper, so I just glued it to some scrap cardstock that I had. And I'm now just adding some washi tape all around it. And what I'm going to do is eventually trim it all down just so that I have a very thin border of brown around my uh, journal card. This is page two of my layout and there's the tag and I did trim it all down off camera and I'm just doing my journaling and this layout is finally nearly over. The top corner there was just looking a little bit too bare for my liking so I do play around with some of the embellishments and things that I've got just lying around my table, just scraps of left from leftover projects. I eventually find a Kaiser Craft stamp and I think, yes, perfect. So I just use my Misty to stamp it out. And before I do that, I'm just shading in the uh, cardstock with the antique linen as I did previously to everything else. And uh, the Stamp actually says, in these moments, time stood still. I do play around with the placement of my little embellishment that I've made here, but it does go into that corner and that's where its home will be. Hooray, we're at the end. So this is what the two pages look like. Sorry this video was a little bit long, but it was a double page layout and I think I like it. So once again, thank you to everyone for your time in watching my videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, I hope to see you all again. Bye and enjoy your week.